Good evening and welcome to another episode of CYC Youth Chat. My name is James and today joining me are my favourite youth members and friends, Veronica, Angela and Mira. How are we guys? Good. 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 We're doing great. Yeah. And today we'll be talking about an interesting topic that you guys have heard, materialism. So we'll be delving to the idea of what is materialism? How can it impact us spiritually? Can it be a good thing? Can it be dangerous for us spiritually and our in our relationship with the Lord? So, okay, guys, I'm just going to ask a question, a few questions here and there, and just we're going to have a nice, beautiful discussion about it. How's that sound? Sounds good. Very good. All right, so w- here's the first question, a very general question. What is materialism? Uh, I think materialism is just the love of anything earthly, um, the desire to achieve anything that takes us away from God, or even if it doesn't seem like it takes away from God, just things that, um, things that are perishable and of this world. Mm. What do you guys think? I definitely agree with what Vito said. I think it's stuff that we tend to focus on a lot in our everyday lives and it's like earthly lust more than it is heavenly ones. What do you think, Angela? Yeah, I definitely have to agree. Just like many of the isms, it's sort of a philosophical way of thinking that directs one to have a physical gain, more of a tangible, quick gratification, especially within the world. We're so used to things coming to us quickly and it becomes sort of like an addiction wanting things to come to us quickly and within the Christian life it makes us turn away from God because it is not something that's as much tangible as it would be to gain money someone who works receives a pay every couple weeks whereas in the spiritual life you pray you pray you pray you may not receive anything for years but over time you receive something over the course of a life and then after we die we we inherit the kingdom of heaven so it's just it's a very unchristian philosophical way of thinking that leads one towards desiring or being addicted towards gaining that form of gratification I think so you're saying it's not just based on one thing alone it's like it's based on more it's for example it's not just based on the physical object itself but it's more than that for example it's, it's our passions it's our desires that can have a negative impact on us is that what you're trying to say yeah yeah definitely like may, may, it may not be that in and of itself but it is the consequence like that may be the consequence of seeking materialistic things it's just wanting that gratification desiring it and then ultimately leads to disappointment whereas God never disappoints Mm -hmm. he always extends his hand and goes over and beyond the second question is why is there such a heavy emphasis in the world to seek after and be attached to material things any ideas, Mira? Um, I think being materialistic to a certain level isn't necessarily a bad thing because it is very much involved in our everyday lives. So we can use that passion to both glorify God and achieve the things that we want at the same time. I think we live in a world that's very influenced by social media and celebrities and the things that we see from those kind of characters are all very materialistic and materialistic and superficial um so i think that has a lot of influence on what people place value on especially after like you know scrolling on instagram for a couple hours all you see is like fashion and money and clothing and like just all these things that don't really matter at all but that's what we become so obsessed with and i think that's why it becomes so easy like to become so focused on those things in our world because we're constantly surrounded and to compare ourselves with those people that have more than us or yeah I agree. So you're saying, yeah, it's okay to have these things in life, but we need to have a sort of discipline. Mm-hmm. We need to have certain boundaries of where we we should not breach. So, for example, yeah, it's okay to have money, you know, for work to support us financially in our lives, but we don't, for example, we don't let it breach our boundary of it becoming our number one fulfillment in life. Because mm-hmm. at, at sometimes, even people, billionaires, they... It takes them away from. It takes us away from God, who, which is our, who's our true fulfillment. I mean, for example, you see billionaires; they are literally like the richest people in the world. Yet, that some of them commit suicide. They suffer from depression. So, so it's because, as you said, it's okay to have in life as long as we don't let it breach a certain boundary. Uh, Angela, what do you think? Yeah, I think you guys covered it. We hit the nail on the head. The nail on the head. All right. The other question is. Uh, is it possible, um, actually, you know what, what attachments do we have to materialistic things that may hinder our relationship with Christ? 
Yeah, I think it all comes back to what we said, what materialism is. It's seeking that quick gratification. It's like even our brains are, it forms an addiction. Like we get a dopamine release whenever you gain something through a materialistic gain. Whereas sometimes you pray and you may walk out feeling the exact same way you did before you prayed. And our weakness, I used to speak for myself, my weakness will cause me to want to seek that quick gratification over the struggle and the turmoil that comes with prayer and comes with virtue. Because in seeking virtue, Christ allows situations to happen to us where we are tested. And that's the Christian life. We put on Christ and in putting on Christ, we live a life like His. And in the perspective of the world, it is not a good life living 30 years of poverty and then another three years of suffering and uh, dying at the death of a criminal although he did nothing wrong it's not it's not a good life by the perspective of the world however like whenever we seek that materialistic thing we slowly detach ourselves from the same line in which christ lived his life a man who had nowhere to lay his head let alone to seek after extra things that we don't even need and therefore, we just detach ourselves from the life of Christ. And any detachment from the life of Christ may cause us to just continually stray away from Him. Mm -hmm. And we get addicted to that. Just, I want more. I want more. I want more. I got this this week. I want that next week. And mm -hmm. it's more every single time. And when does it end? It never ends. It ends in Judgment Day. And you realize it was all nothing. Vanity of vanities. Mm. Veronica, what do, what do you think, based on what Angela has said? No, I agree with everything you said. I think it's important to set a boundary for yourself, to know where the line is between just attaining worldly things so that you can make a living and just live and get by in this life and knowing where it starts to affect you spiritually and mentally. So that, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, Mira? I feel like we struggle with this every single day of our lives. Like I can personally say I see it in myself when I'm studying and I get that good grade and I'm like, wow, I want another good grade, even mm -hmm. though it's not going to really make a difference at the end of the year with my overall grade. Or like shopping. I feel like Vito and I can apply this <laughs> to our everyday lives. Yeah. Just getting that extra shirt that we don't need or things like that. But at the end of the day, what's really the main goal of our lives? Like we're on here, we're on this earth, on a journey to get to heaven. and. I think that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're all saying that, and I, I agree with all of you, you're all absolutely correct. And to add to that, you know, as you guys said, that we're, all, we're also looking for this temporary satisfaction because as humans, that's our nature. We're looking for something that, that satisfies us, but unfortunately, without realizing, we're looking at that materialistic side because it does satisfy us, but it's temporary. You know, as Angela said, we are, we're addicted to, for example, to, to money or to something that satisfies us immediately. But we're, and we're not patient enough. As, as Angela said, and as you guys said, when it comes to prayer, that struggle, that turmoil, when we don't have that hope, we lack that patience. We don't see the joy in it. And that's something we, we need to realize in our spiritual growth, in our spiritual life as we, as we grow. So and, and, uh, that's what I understand from you guys. The next question is, is it possible to have a balance between materialism and spirituality? Have you answered this question before very well? <laughs> um, I was just saying, I think it really depends on how you actually look at that question. Because if you're looking at it from a perspective of someone who really wants to attain all of these materialistic things, you're thinking, how far can I make my mentality like, oh, how far before too far? It's more like you should be thinking of it from the perspective of like, how can I praise God and then have these things in that? It's like that verse. What's the verse that goes like? Um, you cannot praise God in mammon. Yeah. Else. Yeah. So yeah, you can't like, it's more about sacrificing one over the other. It's not 50, 50. I feel like you can't really develop spiritually and you can't grow your relationship with Christ. If you're constantly worried about what's happening on this earth, it's like you have to make your decision and it's not an immediate thing. It's like, step by step you in every time you're presented with an opportunity to make a decision you choose god over whatever the materialistic situation might be um yeah what do you guys think 
I definitely agree and I think that's why the church fathers a lot of the time they tell us to fast and to really make a sacrifice and take time away from the worldly things that we normally do or the materialistic things that we would normally do every day and that's going back to your idea where we can't grow spiritually if we don't sacrifice a little bit of the materialism that's involved in our lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think those are amazing responses. Thank you guys. If you guys want to hear some more amazing responses, please stay tuned for our next part of this episode. Hi guys and welcome back to our second part of our topic, materialism. So guys, this next question I'll be asking is, is it is it is it wrong to be rich? Like in other words, is it a sin to be rich in this life? You know, what do you guys think? And should I start us off? Um, I don't think it's necessarily wrong, like to have money and to have possession. All these things in and of itself aren't wrong, but it's the consequence consequence of having these things, or the intention behind having these things. Um, does someone go to the gym? To get fit so they may be healthy to or take care of the body god gave them or do they go so they can have a good body to show off to others does someone have a lot of money so they can flaunt their possessions in front of others or do they have a lot of money simply because god granted them that and even if they lose all that money and they they don't really they're care unfazed, yeah. and they're unfazed by it yeah like it's just the intention behind it but in and of itself i don't think it's wrong and even when the rich man came to god to jesus and asked him, how can I get into heaven? And he had done all the commandments. Jesus said to him, you're missing one thing. Sell all you have, give it to the poor and follow me. And then he left sad. And then he's like to the disciples, it's almost impossible for someone rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And then they look at him and they're like, how can someone go into heaven? That's not fair, like it's ridiculous. And then his response is, with men all things, uh, with men, a lot of things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And so, even amongst having the, having all this possession, all these materialistic things, if one relies on God and prays and is honest and does all these things with pure intention, then you can't go wrong, even amongst that. And their desires will be altered towards the desires of God, and they use their gain to glorify God. It's I think it's all down to intention. What do you guys think? Yeah, I heard somewhere, um, there's this quote that goes, uh, having a lot of money just amplifies what kind of person you are. So if you're a bad person, it just amplifies the bad things about you. But if you're good and if you're generous and if you're kind, then it amplifies that about you. And I think that's really important when it comes to this point. I think having a lot of money isn't the determining factor, but it's what you do with your money and your status. Or Because we say, of course, materialism is more than just the physical things. But yeah, And also... Um, We know that the devil can't make hell look appealing, so we say that he makes the path leading to hell appealing. And I feel like materialism is, that's the whole idea of materialism. So everything that on this earth that we think is like desirable and will give us satisfaction, all of those things are actually empty. And that's what the devil like kind of distracts us with to lead us to the path of hell. Mira, what do you? I definitely agree with the idea of intention being the biggest factor here. And I remember when we were younger, Abuna would always tell us the story about how there was this man that didn't get the chance to actually get confession but in his heart he wanted to confess and he still made it to heaven. Mm. So I think, although it doesn't necessarily tie into uh, the idea of money, I think intention is the biggest thing. Amazing responses guys, absolutely 100% agree with you. The next question is, what are some signs that show that I'm falling into the love of money and materialism? You know, for me personally, what I think is all of us including myself we have this trouble of you know everything's about me 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 and, w- and what i want and, and i think that's the, one of the biggest indicators that we are on the wrong path because if you look at the saints the people that were pure people who entered heaven and e- even jesus himself you know it, they didn't think about themselves they thought about the the needs of others you know they put themselves last and i think that's a really important factor we need to realize that it's not everything's about me i mean look at jesus he had all you know the glories in heaven he had, he had everything he was above glory and he had the angels and everything in heaven and yet he chose to come down with humbleness so that we, to sacrifice himself to be 
crucifying the crosses of criminals, Angela said, for that treasure, that pearl, and we sinners, he considers us as that beautiful pearl, that treasure. I mean, the amount of humbleness, that love that he has for us to come down and do that. It's a perfect example of how for what we should imitate. We should treat others as such, not just everything's about me. And I think that's one of the biggest factors that we need to consider in our spiritual life and trying to imitate Jesus. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What What do you guys think? Like, any? What are your opinions? You've said it all. What do you think? <laughs> I feel. I feel like you've said everything that I would say. Yeah. All right. More. You sure? Hit the nail on the 